Well, good morning, Professor Kent Lee here. Welcome back to my intermediate writing or intermediate composition course. I uh, hope you, my students are enjoying the holiday. And this is a kind of a sort of a makeup holiday lecture. And I'm going to talk about process paragraphs. I'm going to uh, talk about maybe a good deal of the content I wanted to talk about regarding process paragraphs. A little bit more maybe I'll discuss next time. Uh, along with an assignment I'm going to give you based on a, an essay in the book, a uh, process sort of essay. Uh, I'm not going to really go into this topic a lot though, because I, I think process paragraphs are relatively, you know, not too hard, straightforward, uh, and you've probably dealt with them before in writing classes. So today I'm going to talk about some revision exercises. I've got a couple of revision exercises in the book that is um, improving and correcting the style of, of some process paragraphs and kind of basic exercises. I was going to give them to you as homework through Google Forms, but I decided not to with that holiday and all. It's, it's better if I um, just talk through them. Uh, now, there will be, an, there will be another uh, assignment about process paragraphs um, that I will give you later, uh, probably at the end or after the holiday. Um, based on that essay in the book, uh, it's an essay called How to Write Bad Paragraphs or How to Write Bad Essays or something like that. So I'm just going to talk about aspects of, re of revision today in this lecture in order to point out some ways of improving your writing. Um, these deal particularly with, re with uh, process paragraphs, but I think this will apply to other paragraphs in general, some of the things I will talk about today. So in my book, I've on page 44, I've got a uh, sample process paragraph uh, where you were, we're going to be asked to revise this and I'm just going to do it for you and explain it. And, uh, it's on domestic plugs. Plugs is like, you know, you plug into an outlet. Uh, and page 48, one on changing tires. Changing a tire. Uh, not terribly interesting topics for most of you unless you like electronics or cars or such. Uh, so it's probably better if I kind of show you what I would do. And there are different ways of maybe improving these paragraphs, but I'm going to kind of show you what I would do. And here the goal is to improve, I think, the formality, the formal style. They're written informally, and I, we want to make them sound more professional or formal. Uh, for example, if it's like a, uh, uh, if you want it for a more professional how-to, uh, professional sounding like how-to instruction book manual guide or something, uh, and such. So let's take a look at the first one, domestic plugs, domestic as in household plugs, and this is specifically about American style plugs, so we call the A and B plugs in sort of the international um, um, lingo. You talk about A, B, and C plugs, and I think what we use here in Korea, I think, are C plugs, uh, the round prongs, the metal projections are prongs. So in North America and Japan, uh, for some reason, we use, we use these god-awful um, flat prongs, which are actually not very safe <laughs> compared to the way C prongs, uh, C, C type plugs are in, say, Korea in, and in Europe. Anyway, it is what it is. Well, let's take a look at the sample. Okay, uh, it's kind of written informally, and we want to improve um, the style and make it a little more concise. So let's take a look at it. Domestic plug consists of two parts. The back part, okay, back part. That's not, okay, so part actually in English is kind of um, not very specific. It's more uh, of an informal general kind of term. We want to replace it with a better word like component or section or something like that, which is the main body. Okay, kind of a redundant relative clause and covers up the connections inside, and, and so on. I'm not going to read uh, all of this. Let's just think about what we can do here. Well, this is written in second person, so I'm going to remove second person. Second person is really informal conversational style. It's not really suitable for professional writing and academic writing. Uh, a good way to do that is to use passive voice, passive verbs, uh, like um, something is removed. The 
uh, the screw is removed instead of saying you like you remove the screw or telling a command remove the screw um, passive voice the screw is removed um, now you might have had some English teachers writing teachers told telling you don't use passive voice it's bad that is absolutely wrong advice passive voice exists in languages for a reason and we use it um, especially in scientific writing and a lot of times just in general in academic and professional writing it sounds better why because in the original form of this paragraph it's all you you uh, often in the form of commands you do this so the kind of focus is on you the subject the doer you 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 and we don't want that we want to focus on the process uh, the process involved, the verbs, the actions, or what is being done to the plug, uh, to this thing. Um, the doer, or the agent, um, the active entity, is unimportant, it's irrelevant. Uh, and we want to get rid of the you, in fact, to make this more formal sounding. So you'd get rid of f second person, definitely. When possible, you would also get rid of first person, unless it's absolutely necessary. What else are we going to do? Um, using passive voice, reducing wordiness and some vocabulary edits, some vocabulary changes like replacing part with a more specific term. Part can replace with a more specific term depending on the context like component, section, um, sector in different contexts. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do here. Some of the edits or changes I'm going to make. Um, of course I'm going to get rid of part change that. The main body of the plug, um, of the plug, that's a bit redundant here. We know we're talking about the plug. Main body is a bit general. Um, connections inside, some of, some of the wording is a bit redundant or not really necessary. So I'm going to get rid of part. Um, going down to, uh, after the middle, looking to the plug from the top again, looking, that's kind of colloquial because the understood subject is you. Uh, and this is just really conversational style in order to we can make that more concise uh, it's not necessary to emphasize the purpose by putting in order to just to change uh, firstly um, as I've mentioned in class before uh, first of all first second third is American style firstly secondly thirdly is British style uh, in this case I don't feel like it's really necessary it would be okay if it's a manual but let's just make it more formal anyway. Um, you could say then or something else or just get rid of it altogether. Unscrew the screw. That's the kind of redundant. Remove the screw maybe. Which enables the back part to re be removed. What? That is really unnecessary. Again, looking inside the plug, the back part, front. Uh, this is all just really wordy and redundant. I'm going to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's not necessary. Here's what I've come up with. Again, other people might change it in different ways. The domestic plug consists of two sections. Uh, a main section that houses the connection. So house is like to contain, like a, uh, contain something within it. Um, it's often used when you're talking about um, mechanical parts, uh, housing. Uh, that's a term that's used for mechanical parts and, and such. Uh, cases, cases, something like that, something that is like a case that contains something. Um, the domestic plug consists, consists of two sections, a main section that houses the connections and a front section with three metal prongs. So notice um, I've gotten rid of a relative clause um, earlier, the front part which supports um, and like with which holds. Um, Often relative clauses are good, but sometimes you can get rid of really short relative clauses when they are simply describing um, things, uh, particularly when it's like which has or which is. Uh, if it's simply a, a short, a short descriptive relative clause, uh, you can replace it with maybe with. So I've replaced this with a front section with three metal prongs that fit into the socket. Um, so instead of saying uh, the front part which supports or which contains three metal projections, I've gotten rid of that and replaced it with prepositional phrase with. So sometimes you can get rid of short 
short descriptive relative clauses when it's like which has or which contains and, and replace it with with. Sometimes you can make it shorter, more concise. You don't need that. Um, with the ground pin, in the original it said earth or ground pin, and I, we just we call it a ground pin. It's it's the pin that um, kind of protects you from um, from shocks and from uh, too much electricity to ground. Uh, so with the ground pin at the top, the lie pin is bottom right, and the neutral is bottom left. So I've gotten rid of some of the other uh, phrases like looking at the plug and, and, and such like that. To change the plug, uh, so instead of saying in order to change the plug, just to change the plug and instead of saying firstly unscrew the screw which enables the pack part to remove it, so we're to just remove the screw on the back section exposing the back of the prongs and that um, replaces like looking inside the plug the back part of the front part one sees the back part of the projection just remove the screw on the back section exposing the back of the prongs and, and then I would you would go on to add more about what you're going to do next so uh, in this we have removed uh, one unnecessary short relative clause a short descriptive relative clause uh, we improve the wording uh, we have uh, gotten rid of a lot of redundant or unnecessary wording we've gotten rid of second person and replaced it with with passive voice verbs uh, or active verbs um, uh, I think in this case yeah um, in this case I've replaced it with active verbs uh, mostly but we'll see passive verbs in the next example uh, and it's, it's shorter it sounds better it's a little more concise it sounds more formal the next exercise this passage on changing a tire so a little vocabulary here when you've got a car tire and you've got a car a flat tire a flat um, things you need to know vocabulary well that front cover is the hubcap that you need to take off um, you've got your tire underneath there and you've going you're going to get out probably in the trunk or back of the car um, your spare tire that's your little replacement tire your lug wrench and that's the sort of tool you see at the top a lug wrench and a jack and jack is what you use to lift up the car and you're going to use the lug wrench to um, jack up the jack and to lift the car um, then in the picture on the right you see the lug wrench another kind of lug wrench and those are lug nuts those are the bolts those are the big nuts metal things that hold the tire onto the metal rim the metal rim of the wheel so here we have the original that you see in my book changing tires really a very simple operation if you have the right tools uh, when you have removed the hubcap from the wheel which has the flat correctly place the jack to lift the car off the ground now you're ready to jack up the car high enough for the tire to clear the ground. Uh, okay, not bad, but it's second person-y. We want to sound more formal, like this is for a manual or a how-to guide that you want to sound professional. So we're going to remove second person. Uh, especially in this one, we're going to use active uh, passive voice. Um, we're going to use descriptive rather than prescriptive expressions. So uh, here I'm not talking so much about descriptive relative clauses. Uh, but the tone in general, the, the verb tone in general, so the original is all like, you do this, sort of commands. Um, so it, it's sort of prescriptive, that is, somebody is prescribing or telling you what to do. Uh, and for formal writing, we don't really want that kind of tone. It doesn't sound very formal or professional. Instead, we're going to describe how it is generally done, because, of course, situations are different and uh, I don't know, you might have like a really unusual, a different situation where I can't just tell you exactly what to do. Uh, I want to describe what's generally done and if you have any, a really weird situation, a very strange kind of uh, car tire or um, it's on a very strange kind of road surface um, where you, you know, have to do something different. Okay, uh, I'm going to use descriptive expressions. So I'm not talking about the relative clauses, but the tone, particularly in the verbs, the subjects and the verbs, rather than saying, do this, or you should do this, I am simply, instead of prescribing, I'm going to describe how it's generally done. And again, for that, passive voice can work really, really well in a case like this. 
in other cases, sometimes active voice too, of course. But uh, but with uh, third person verbs like uh, you know the, the driver who's changing the car does this. Uh, third person verbs, not you, and not usually not I. And again, we're going to reduce the wordiness and vocabulary edits. So let me show you some things I'm going going to get rid of. Uh, really, that's kind of colloquial. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. If you have again second person, you know, if you have kind of a wordy and necessary right, tools. Again, when you the you uh, here we go um, third line the wheel which has the flat so that which has you now that's a short um, descriptive relative clause again other short descriptive relative clauses might be meaningful which contains in other cases might be meaningful but in the previous example which contains was not very meaningful and in this example which has especially if it's which has uh, it's not very meaningful we can replace it with with the preposition with um, and again place the jacko so second person verbs like kind of commands you place the jack now you are ready again too informal we're going to get rid of that so this is how I might change it there are you know other people might change it in other ways that are fine okay this is just what I thought of changing flat tire is a rather simple process so I change very to rather simple, sounds more formal, uh, professional style, with the correct tools, with. So instead of have, I use with. So again, if you have sort of a, a, a light descriptive phrase, I can replace it with with, with the correct tools. After removing, so removing is kind of a gerund, that is a verb, an ing form of a verb that acts like a noun, that's a gerund. Uh, removing the hubcap from the wheel with the flat instead of the wheel that has the flat, the wheel with the flat, the flat tire, the jack should be correctly positioned. So positioned here, more formal term, replaced, the jack should be, and, and here I am using should be, which sounds a bit more prescriptive, or it's really more like strong advice. It's not really commanding or ordering you, but it's just like strong advice because this is a matter of safety, uh, how you position the jack is really a safety big safety issue because if you don't position the jack correctly when you're doing this uh, it can lead to serious injury to the person or damage to the car uh, so should is maybe the strongest language i'm going to use here uh, should be correctly positioned to lift the car off the ground then the car can be jacked up so instead of now you're ready to jack up it's passive the car can be jacked up high enough for the tire to clear the ground for the tire to be off away from the ground. Um, the next part, the next half of this passage, the original, after you've done that, I'm going to strike all of that, get rid of that, uh, carefully loosen, case second person uh, command verbs, uh, imperative or command form verbs. The tool you use to do that, wordy uh, informal second person, I'll get rid of that. Um, next uh, a uh, couple of lines down now you're ready and I'll get rid of that next line as as firmly as you can get rid of the you and such uh, and the last is not too bad minor fixing in the last sentence well, let me show you what I can do then so I've replaced after you've done that I've replaced it with then after the lug nuts that hold the tire and rim in place I could say are to be carefully loosened. Now that's kind of a, a more formal way of saying like need to or should be loosened. Um, that's one way. It's kind of like a, a, um, a way of expressing either um, uh, how something is generally to be done, sort of general suggestion or advice. Um, um, it's kind of like should, but it's not as strong. Um, are to be carefully loosened or I could just go with a very general descriptive tone are carefully loosened like that's how you usually do it uh, I'll choose one of those uh, as we'll see in the next um, slide using a tool known as a lug wrench um, and that's better than you know than the original is you use the tool you use to do that is called a lug wrench this is just much more concise 
the old tire is removed. So again, passive voice. I'm instead of saying remove the tire, I uh, went the tire is removed, and the spare tire is. I could say put in place. That's one way. That's fine. If I want to be even a little more formal, um, the spare tire is positioned on the rim, the metal part of the wheel that holds the uh, the tire. The lug nuts are placed. So again, instead of commands like uh, place the lug nuts, it's the lug nuts are placed, passive voice, place back in the wheel and tighten as firmly as possible. Instead of saying as firmly as you can, as firmly as possible with the lug wrench. All that remains is replacing the hubcap. So here I change um, the verbs at the end into, from commands to um, kind of gerund forms. All that remains is replacing the hubcap. You could also say to replace the hubcap, that's fine. I just feel like the gerunds are a little more, they feel a little bit more concrete or real. You can picture it in your mind more concretely. Um, it's to better mental picture. So um, infinitives are kind of more general, kind of like to replace, kind of more indefinite. Um, where a gerund kind of, I think, makes for a better mental picture. Uh, it feels a bit more concrete, a bit less abstract. Replacing the hubcap, lowering the car to the ground, giving the nuts a final kite, tightening and removing the jack. So what we have here in the finished product, lug nuts, I've gone with uh, maybe more concise version. Um, this one, the lug nuts that hold the tire in room place are carefully loosened using a tool known as a lug wrench. The old tire is removed and the spare tire is positioned on the rim and so on. So this is how I've done it. Okay, so what we've done here, uh, replacing uh, for th these examples and for other examples when you're revising your paragraphs, process paragraphs or other kinds of paragraphs, um, getting rid of second person expressions and when possible first person expressions, uh, maybe sometimes combining phrases or sentences or clauses, uh, upgrading the vocabulary when, when I can do so. Uh, passive voice or or active voice um, if it's third person um, like he she it they subjects uh, and when possible passive voice puts more I think attention on the action or the process or, or what is happening uh, not the doer not the person because the doer or the person the agent is not important here we don't care who it is uh, general descriptive tone rather than prescriptive like do this do that describing this is how changing a tire is usually done you know these are general these are the general procedures for changing a tire I'm describing the general procedures um, there might be some unusual situations where you have to do things a bit differently but this is the general process uh, Six, we've had a couple of examples. So occasionally, occasionally you have this sort of light descriptive relative clause, like um, with have, especially which has, when you're talking about the descriptions, uh, the wheel that has the flat, the wheel with the flat. With the flat, it's just more concise, it flows better. Uh, you don't need a, a whole relative clause for um, a very simple description. Uh, so, uh, general descriptive tone, but light, short descriptive relative clauses, usually those with the verb have, which have. Um, if it can be replaced with with, a with phrase, then do that. Uh, and I've used gerunds, infinitives, in serial verb phrases. So, a serial verb phrase is when you have um, several verbs after another, and I've done it with gerunds here at the end. Um, Replacing the hubcap, lowering the car, giving the nuts, the final tightening, removing the jack. So you've got this series of verbs uh, making kind of a, one complex sentence with several verb phrases, or here gerund uh, verb phrases, replacing the hubcap. Uh, and that's one way to maybe combine sentences and make them more concise. So these are things that I've done here. Uh, in this uh, in these exercises so in these exercises we've seen some ways of improving uh, process paragraphs or other paragraphs as well these same principles would apply to other kinds of paragraphs it's just that we tend to see this 
I think process paragraphs are the best way of sh showing some of these things. Better, more concise wording, better subject and verb types. So getting rid of second person and using um, active verbs, passive verbs, and so active verbs with third person subjects, like the driver changes the tire, uh, passive verbs, gerunds sometimes, and things like that. So these are ways of improving your paragraphs, improving your writing when you need to revise your, your paragraph and essay assignments. Uh, so I hope this helps. Um, we are, I'm going to have you um, do a Google form about the um, process paragraph essay that's in the book. Uh, so that will be probably posted in the LMS toward the end of the holiday break. So take, you can look out for that. Uh, in the next lecture, I will uh, talk more about that and that assignment probably sometime next week. So that's it for now. I hope you are enjoying your holiday, those of you in Korea, and I will see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.